Welcome to the block printing unit, part two, the carving. If you are finished with your drawing and haven't yet received your block, recite the seven carving rules to your teacher so he or she can give you your block. The seven carving rules can be found on the block print instruction sheet. This instruction sheet is on the reverse side of your six inch square drawing sheet. Remember the seven carving rules. They are, Always use a bench hook when carving. Carve away from your hands and yourself. Be responsible with the tools, no horseplay. Return the tools back to the jars on the teacher's desk when you are done. Carve away the white areas and leave the penciled areas. Use the small tool to carve around the penciled areas. And use the large tool to carve out the large areas of white. Even though you may have already studied the seven carving rules, you haven't yet received the more detailed instruction necessary to create a top quality project. That is what this next section focuses on. When you get the tools from the teacher's desk, make sure you get one small carving tool and one large carving tool. I've purposely given them different colored handles to make it easier to tell them apart. Always use a bench hook when carving. Hook it on the end of your table and make sure it is secured in place. You should have one of each of the carving tools. And when you carve, make sure you carve towards this lip. This top edge is designed to help keep your block in place and carving towards it helps to ensure that you carve away from yourself and make carving as safe as possible. You begin by carving with a small tool, carving around all of the penciled lines. If you have a corner, you want to make sure you start in the corner and carve away from that corner. If you carve towards a pencil line, you could slip, and if you slip, you'll carve away a penciled part, and there's no repairing that. Notice how I'm constantly turning the block and carving towards the turned up lip edge on the bench hook. This ensures that I'm always carving away from my hands and myself. Continue to carve around the edge of the pencil lines with a small tool and also use it to get into small, tight areas that you wouldn't be able to get into with the larger tool. Once you're done carving around all the penciled areas and the detailed areas with a small tool, you can go ahead and start carving in the wide open areas with the larger tool. When carving with the larger carving tool, make sure that you don't carve too deep. Should you decide to do an extra credit carving on the back, carving too deep can cause you to carve all the way through the block and can also cause your block to be weakened. When you are finished carving, your project should resemble the one shown here. Notice the grooves in the wide open areas. This is typical of the block printing process and won't lower your grade. In fact, these grooves can add character to your printout. Carving too deep and removing these lines or grooves can ruin or weaken your block if you decide to do an extra credit carving on the back side. Each day when you are done carving, sweep all your shavings onto the bench hook and make sure to throw them in the trash. Make sure you return the carving tools back to the teacher's desk and put any other materials such as bench hooks or spoons back where they belong. This concludes the carving portion of the block printing unit. The next and final step you will learn about is printing. Have fun!